Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you guys today. I am bringing the new deck that I alluded to in my recent posts uh, that I'm sure you have all been waiting for, a lot of you for quite some time. Here it is, finally featured on the channel, good old Virtual World. I am definitely late to the party <laughs> with this one. Um, I really should have probably built this deck quite a while ago, but, uh, well, you know, it's like they say, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, the second best time is today. So I figured what better time to jump in to Virtual World than now when I'm just really looking for something new um, that's still fun, competitive, has that like comboing aspect that I've grown uh, to enjoy with these decks here in Master Duel. And uh, Virtual World just seemed like the perfect fit, so I decided to move in on the deck and go ahead and build it. Now, if you look at my build here, you'll see it's a fairly standard one, right? I'm not doing anything too crazy as far as, like, tech options go in the main or the extra deck. The extra deck especially is very, like, I don't want to call it vanilla, but it kind of is. Uh, there are definitely more interesting extra deck options you can use than the ones that are maybe even better. Um, but I'm still very much... I don't know, I'm kind of in the learning phase. It's really been an interesting process learning this deck in particular, because normally with decks what I'll do is I'll like look up a combo guide, right? Or I'll watch some, and or I'll watch some videos uh, just to get a feel for how the deck plays. But the thing with Virtual World is I've played against it so many times that I kind of feel like I already have a, a good enough grasp of how the deck works. So between that and then just kind of like drawing your opening hand and, you know, reading the effects and just uh, figuring out what effects make sense to activate. I don't know if this is everyone's experience, but I, I find the deck to be fairly intuitive in that regard. Uh, it's usually pretty clear what you are and aren't able to do. I think, I think what a lot of people get tripped up on is, like, just trying to make sure you're getting the right combination of virtual monsters in play to make plays, but that's really, again, not as difficult as I think um, maybe some people think it is, so we'll go ahead and break down the list card by card here, as always. Uh, I'll talk about the cards, what they do, their role in the deck, and then after that we, as always, have some gameplay to take a look at as well uh, with the deck. Um, both this and I'm pretty sure the next video, like tomorrow's video, if not tomorrow, in the next couple of days, uh, it's going to be another Virtual World gameplay video. Um, I'm really, in particular, I mean, I'm always asking for your guys' feedback, but um, I'm especially asking for you guys' feedback in regards to uh, the gameplay that I'm going to show you, because, again, I'm, I'm fairly new to the deck, and I'm also very much winging it. Like, again, not really following strict combo guides, so um, if I'm missing out on ways to optimize my plays, uh, definitely don't be afraid to let me know. And, um, yeah, like I said, I, like I've always said, your guys' feedback definitely means quite a bit to me, so I'm always appreciative, uh, to have it. So, anyway, let's go ahead and go through the list card by card, and then we'll go ahead, like I said, and talk about the deck a little bit and how it functions, and then we'll do some gameplay. Also, you'll have to forgive me if I, uh, sound a little bit different. I, my allergies have been acting up, so I might sound a little bit stuffier or something, but anyway... We've got three Maxi, three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, two Virtual World Hime Nyan Nyan, uh, three Virtual World My Hime Lulu, three Virtual World uh, Shizi, I think, Gigi, uh, three Virtual, or sorry, two Virtual World Roshi Lao Lao, three Virtual Virtual World, that's, that name is hard to say sometimes, Kieran Lili, one Nibiru the Primal Being, one Harpy's Feather Duster, two Pod of Desires, three Virtual World City Kowloon, Three Virtual World Gates, uh, King Long, I think. <laughs> two Emergency Teleport, two Called by the Grave, two Cross Out Designator, two Infinite Impermanence, two Virtual World Gates, Chu Chi, and finally a Virtual World Gate, Jean Wu. Uh, down here in the extra deck, we've got one Stardust Charge Warrior, one Coral Dragon, one Virtual World Beast, Jiju, or Ji, Ju Ju. I I couldn't even begin to tell you. <laughs> One Cloud Castle, one Vermilion Dragon Mech, one Ravenous Crocodragon Arctheus, uh, one Virtual QB uh, Shenshen, one of Phantom Knights of Breaksword, one number 75 Bamboozling Gossip Shadow, one Constellar Ptolemy M7, one number 39 Utopia Beyond, one Virtual World Phoenix Fan Fan, one Gaia Dragon the Thunder Charger, one True King of All Calamities, and then finally one Divine Arsenal Ah Zeus Sky Thunder. So. 
Yeah, so if you're wondering what actually finally did make me decide to build this deck, I... <laughs> what happened was I, I got to a thousand, or I got to ten thousand gems, so I was like, okay, I need to spend a thousand so that stuff doesn't just end up sitting in my gift box, and... I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and crack open a Virtual World Secret Pack, why not? And then... I packed a, a Shenzhen, and I was like, okay, that's enough motivation, I'll, I'll build Virtual virtual World now. <laughs> Plus, uh, like I said, I've been looking for more fun decks to try. Like, I built Live Twin, as we saw in yesterday's video, I think it was yesterday's uh, video there, but um, just didn't scratch that itch of what I was looking for out of a new deck. But anyway, let's talk about the actual deck itself. So like I said, my build is really standard here, right? I don't really, I'm not really doing anything too adventurous with the main deck. Like, we're playing, we're playing just hand traps and pretty standard copies of all the uh, Virtual World cards. Um, which is pretty much three of everything except Lao Lao because obviously it's at two, and... Nyan Nyan isn't the, really the kind of card you typically want to draw, you also just want to send it from deck to graveyard, so... Uh, we're only playing two copies of Nyan Nyan, not to say that she's a bad card by any means at all in the deck. In fact, she's fantastic, but uh, we just don't always want to be drawing her. In fact, we don't usually want to be drawing her, like I said, we just want to send her from deck to graveyard. Um, and again, with even the spell and traps, you know, we're playing two cross out designator, which isn't seen in every virtual world deck, but um, I think in this format in particular, uh, like with most combo based decks, it's just really important to have two cross out designator, uh, mostly just to protect your plays and act as insurance. Um, and virtual world definitely needs that assistance because it's funny, right? This deck is seems really, really scary when you're playing against it. I guess it's kind of the case with any combo deck, but then. Once you actually start playing with it, then you start to become more aware of what the deck's weaknesses are, and in that regard, it almost makes the deck feel, like, <laughs> a little bit more, not human, I was gonna say human, um, it just makes it seem less scary, right? It's like, oh, this deck has flaws as well, um, as, uh, having strong boards, but, of course, it's all mental cognitive bias, right? Like, when we're playing against the deck, we remember all the times we got wrecked by it and we're playing with the deck, we remember all the times we got really unlucky and lost with it. Um, but yeah, so, basically, if you don't know at all what Virtual Worlds do, they're basically just about getting, uh, level 3s and 6s on the board, from there they can go into level 6 or 9 synchros, as well as rank 3 or 6 Xyz monsters, uh, also rank 9, by making, or using two level 9 synchros and making true king of all calamities. Ideally, if you're going first, and you do always want to go first in this deck, <coughs> excuse me, you will use, uh, you will ideally end on true king, plus Chu Chi here, and... The reason you want to end on these two specifically is, uh, excuse me, well one, VFD, obviously, uh, the ability to shut off your opponent from activating onboard effects or attacking for the entire turn, uh, that's really, really good. Um, but Chu Chui not only acts as spot removal against your opponent, but um, if your opponent tries to use infinite permanence or something to negate your um, true king of all calamities, what you can do is you can use Chu Chui's effect to blow up your own true king, and then that way the effects can't be negated. It seems a little counterproductive to want to blow up the boss monster you just spent all these resources making, but really, as long as we can lock our opponent out of making plays for the turn, for even one turn, that's really all true king is wants to do, is bias that one turn, uh, to then go into like an OTK the next turn. Um, but it's not even necessarily, that's not even the end of your true king, so to speak, because it's pretty easy to recycle it back to the extra deck you can um, banish it with, like, a Shen Shen's effect or something. And then you can use, I think, no, that's only Virtual World. Um, oh, there's a way to recycle. I'm trying to remember what it is off the top of my head. Oh, shoot, I'm drawing a blank here. I know there's a way to recycle the True King back to the deck once it's banished. Well, I know you can do it from Graveyard as well with, uh, Ptolemy. Uh, you can just put the True King back in your deck, so... Uh, just because you've blown this up with your Virtual Gate Chu Chui, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're out of True King for the entire game, but... Honestly, you probably won't even... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh man, my allergies are... Of course, they really start acting up <laughs> as soon as I start recording here. Um, but no, you typically don't need to recycle the True King that many times. Just the one activation is often more than enough to make sure that your opponent isn't able to... Uh, well, do anything. Um... The extra deck here is pretty standard as well. There are some other options you can use that actually see quite a bit of play. Um, namely, the Ultimaya Zulkin, Zulkin plus Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon uh, is a pretty good play to go into. I haven't built it here because that's two more ultra rares to craft, and it's 
it's not niche again I think it's about maybe I think it's a little under 50% I'd actually have to look at master dual meta I'm not gonna do that right now but um, suffice it to say you, you don't it, the deck does not require Zulkin and crystal wings so um, as I tend to like to do with decks when I'm first trying them out I just spend all the resources necessary to make like a base build and then if I decide I like the deck enough to keep playing it and tinkering with it after then we can craft some more experimental options and I do think virtual world is gonna be one of those decks that I end up uh, featuring quite a bit on the channel actually like I said I've got this deck profile I've got another gameplay video probably coming out tomorrow and honestly, I'll probably put out another virtual world video um, before the season is even over. And ideally, I would like to ladder with this deck a little bit at the start of the next season. Um, I'm still really, really new to it though. And again, that's where I'm gonna rely on uh, you guys in the comments to help me out a little bit as well uh, in order to just help me um, make sure I'm making the, the optimal plays, I guess. So uh, without further ado though, let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay now. All right, so this game here is going to be against DDDs. Um, this is going to be a really short one, but I, I saved this one mostly to just show off like a kind of basic, I guess, so to speak, combo line. It is kind of one of the basic combo lines that I've been doing. So, um, you know, we look at this opening hand. This is obviously a really, really good hand, right? And I know that Lili plus Kowloon is a combo. Well, Lili plus Kowloon, and then you also have to have a discard, a card to discard for the uh, King Long's graveyard effect and. Um, Shaolin Wu is definitely a really, really good target for that, so, um, I have, I know that because I opened these three cards, I have, pretty much I can make the True King and, uh, Chu Chui board with this, so, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So, like I was kind of alluding to in the profile, right, like, I'm familiar with the basic lines, I basically just don't know if I'm doing it in the most optimal way, or if I can be getting maybe some more plays in addition to, uh, the base stuff that I'm getting here. So, anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Gonna want to lead with Kowloon here. Probably activates Max C in response. I've noticed quite a few people tend to respond to Kowloon with Max C. Um, not really sure why, because Kowloon doesn't special summon, and this deck absolutely telegraphs all of its special summons with effects, so um, you definitely should hold Max C until you know your opponent's gonna special. It's like when people Max C against Fractal when you're playing Trizu. Uh, not really understanding that one either. But uh, so the two we're gonna send here that you typically want to send with Lili. Are the we just banished at the virtual gate to King Long and then the Nyan Nyan. Uh, the King Long is going to be used to, with the card that we're going to discard, which in our case is going to be Jean Wu, in order to search or Sean Wu. Not, you know what I mean. Uh, in order to search a virtual monster, it's going to be Lulu for us. And then the Nyan Nyan is good to set up in grave because when we summon the Lulu, we can bring this back as a level three tuner. So further extending our board. Oh, and that uh, trap that we discarded is also going to be able to. Uh, bring back a virtual monster from the graveyard, which is nice. So we'll get a Gigi here in order to put another non-tuner on the board as well as further get stuff in our graveyard for more plays. We'll just send another Nyan Nyan because we don't really have anything else to send at this point. We've already set up pretty much most of the stuff we want to set up in graveyard. So Stardust Charge Warrior is a good thing to go into early because it gets you a draw. And then obviously being a level 6 non-tuner monster is going to make a level 9 with our Lulu here. So then we can... Uh, bring the Lulu back with the um, virtual gate Sean Wu. I, I, I think that's how you pronounce that. The X in. Is it typically pronounced SH when it's uh, referring to Chinese names, I think? And I think Virtual World is based off Chinese names. I don't know. I have no idea, actually. But uh, anyway, here. So we're going to make the uh, Croco Draco uh, thing <laughs> as our first level 9 so we can get an extra draw. Let's, oops, sorry, I bumped the mic cord there. Um, that is one of the really nice things about the virtual combos that you get so many like additional draws, right? Um, and as you can see, that was enough to uh, end us with our true king of all calamities plus the virtual gate Chu Chui, which again is going to set up our opponent in <laughs> pretty much ensure that they can't do anything. Now, you do typically want to activate the true king's effect during the draw phase um, because that way, I don't know, sometimes there are main phase specific effects that will uh, get in the way. <laughs> Um, plus, then you don't give your opponent the opportunity to use their player priority on their main phase in order to activate a card uh, before you're able to use the True King's effect. So, had my opponent not surrendered right away, then yeah, during the draw phase, I would have activated uh, True King of All Calamities. If my opponent would have responded with like an Imperm or a Droplet, uh, then Chuchi would have 
Yeah, like I said, we would have banished two or shuffled the two back that were banished, pop our true king, and then the effect would have resolved. You do have to be careful about droplet, though. Um, if they use droplet and send a trap card, you're not able to respond with Chuchi. That's a little bit narrow. Uh, there's also occasionally your opponent might have Imperm and then follow it up with another negate, like Imperm, and then you chain link two Chuchi, and then they chain link three droplet. But then in that case, there's not really a whole lot you can do about it anyway. But uh, just be aware that those are possible outs that could still negate your true king uh, of all calamities even under those circumstances so okay cool let's go ahead and jump into the next game so this game is going to be against good old trizu always like to get matches in against meta decks there and it looks like we are taking the first turn here um let's see what does our opening hand look like okay so this is a little bit less of a standard opening hand as far as plays go right we've got gg Lao Lao and Lili, as well as the uh, Sean. I, re I really, I really, it seems like I always open this card. Um, not that I even really mind though, because again, you can just uh, send it to the graveyard with uh, uh, the King Long, the virtual old gate that searches a monster. So here, you might be thinking like, and it's a pretty common misconception I think when for people who aren't as familiar with virtual world to be like, oh, they don't have a gate up, so they can't really make plays. Well, you can still make plays with only the monsters. Um, like in this case here, we're going to be summoning the Gigi, I imagine. Yep, and then we'll use the Lili. That'll let us send a spell and a trap. We'll send a King Long and then one of our Chuchis because we don't have anything else to send. Now we can use King Long, banish that, and then add... Ooh, we're not going to add anything because of Ash Blossom. Although, my plan was to add uh, the Lulu and then continue my place from there. That would have been able to, to search the other Chuchui and then also set up everything I need to. But, that's actually fine. We can still use Lao Lao here and summon it. Even though we're not going to get anything back from Grave, we can still make our level 9 the Synchro. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and make Shen Shen uh, in defense mode here. And then I'll just go ahead and pass. I actually should have thought about not setting this and just leaving it in my hand to potentially discard next turn. But, uh... Yeah, opponent's gonna have a kaiju for us here. Definitely not what we like to see. I'll respond with Max C. Typically, if I get kaijued, I actually like to respond with Max C. And the reason I like to do this is because I figure, like, if the first thing your opponent does is kaiju you, it's not too unlikely that they're gonna have a kaiju to summon in turn. Um, or even just generally speaking, right? If your opponent kaijus you, then they generally will have a plan to get over the kaiju they gave you. So, and it will more often than not involve special summoning. Um, that's why I like to throw out the maxi after my opponent, right after my opponent kaijus me, even though it's not necessarily in response to a summon. So, oh, gotta love these allergies. <laughs> I'll try not to complain about them too much. So, yeah, Karos can destroy our Lili there. I'm not really too concerned about that. And they set a card and pass. So, it looks like our maxi was able to deter really any kind of a response and was able to keep us in the game here. And now that we've gone for Shen Shen, uh, this is pretty much how we're going <laughs> to win this game, more or less, is just uh, keep using Shen Shen here, right? Oh, also, by flipping up the Sean, oh, I didn't realize our opponent could see it that quickly, but I was going to say, by flipping that up, uh, we're able to then establish a virtual world gate on board, which will let us use our monsters in order to... Well, make plays. <laughs> so again, the, the plan with banishing the King Long there was to search a Lulu, send the GG, special the Lulu, search another monster, probably a Lili, special that, and then from there on we just have plays for days. Especially because we already had the Gamma Seal and the Shen Shen out. Um, definitely really, really easy to OTK our opponent there. And I'm sure they realize that, which is why they conceded. So, alright, let's go and look at the next game. All right, this game is going to be against Crooked Crook, ex Crooked Cook, rather, Exodia, um, which I don't play against this deck very often, but it's really satisfying to win against it when I do, because, boy, this is an annoying strategy to have to play against, so. Oh, we're going to be taking the first turn here again. Um, I actually didn't really open too many plays here. Uh, as you can see, I only opened Lao Lao. I did open a Kowloon, right, but I only opened Lao Lao on King Long, although now that I think about it, I could have activated Kowloon, activated Chu Chui, used Lao Lao. Wait, but can you special? I don't think you can special the same thing you send because it's all one effect. So yeah, that wouldn't have worked anyway. Okay, so that's why I passed there. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't work because it's all one effect. But uh, yeah, I don't really have plays here with this hand, so I do have the max C's. I'm pretty much just going to be relying on a max C in order to make sure I don't lose this game. Um, 
So the prosperity right away, and I'm, I've seen this prosperity, and I think, oh, Danger Kaiju, until I see that Exodia head, which they then add, and I'm like, oh, okay, so it's... But I was like, what kind of Exodia deck is this? But then as soon as they summoned the beautiful Finces, I immediately knew. I was like, oh, it's Crooked Crook. <coughs> Excuse me, because then they're going to summon the... I think it's Buzzsaw Shark that summons the, I think, Right Hand Shark, and they overlay into Crooked Crook, which is then unaffected by effects and can't be destroyed by card of battle. And then they camp on that until they draw Exodia, so... Definitely not trying to mess with that. I'm gonna maxi in response to the Beautiful, um, <laughs> fin uh, oh, it's just Princess. They didn't, that's right, because they never, I always, was really annoyed that they never went for the full pun there. They should, it should have been Beautiful fin -cess, but then it's Princess, I don't know. I'm definitely gonna, really lucky draw with the Imperm here, being able to negate the Buzzsaw Shark. That's gonna prevent the other shark from coming out, which is gonna keep them from getting their stupidly OP Crooked Crook in play, so. Ah, yes, here we rip good old Desires, if we're going to activate that straight away. And then draw it, and we get a Lulu, so that combined with the Kowloon is more than enough to make plays here. I actually want to see what I banished, because, I don't know, for some reason with this deck in particular, maybe you just haven't played with Desires in quite a while. Um, I've been getting into the bad habit of not checking my banishes right away, and I definitely want to make sure that I'm doing that. Uh, with this deck, we're playing multiple copies of pretty much every important card, so it's pretty rare that you'll banish... Like everything you need, um, or like you know, you know, you know what I mean. Um, like banish all, all copies of a, a combo piece you need. But uh, it has happened to me before where I have to make some awkward plays because of things I banish. So uh, if you're playing desires, definitely do be mindful of that and try to make sure you're always checking your banishes straight away. So yeah, like I said, with Lulu and Choo Chui, that's more than enough to combo off here. We can use the King Long to uh, search up the Lily, sending the. I shot Wu to the graveyard to get a special summon later. And now we're going to, like, again, a fairly standard line. What I, th what I think with Slash Assume is a fairly standard line here. Uh, going for the start as Charge Warrior and then bringing back the Lulu, which in turn brings back the Nyan Nyan, and now we can go for our two level nines. I think I'll probably go for the Croco Draco to get the draw first here. Yep, that's what I typically like to do. Just to make sure I know all my options before I commit to any additional plays. Oh, the cool thing about Nyan Nyan, too, is that they, uh, and actually Shen Shen can do this, too. Uh, Nyan Nyan can put cards banished with Desires back in the deck, and similarly, I'm pretty sure Shen Shen can uh, return cards that were banished by Desires back to the graveyard, so that's always nice to keep in mind. Oh, that's right, I actually go for the OTK here, we're not even gonna, uh, True King. So this is actually a pretty, I've noticed anyway, a fairly common way to OTK with a line similar to what I just opened with there, if you're going second, right, is to uh, go for the Croco Draco, and then the Shen Shen, and then the Dragon Mech, and then blow up your opponent's monster with the Dragon Mech, and then this is all exactly 8,000 damage here. Which is pretty nice. I'm pretty sure I've done this line to OTK, like, maybe three different times now, so... I have to assume that is a, like, known or fairly decently established way to OTK, but... Um, in the event that it's not, I guess there's the line <laughs> that I did. Like I said, I've probably done that, like, I, w I think it's been three, maybe four, but I'm pretty sure it's three uh, different times where I have used that line in order to OTK the opponent uh, for exactly 8,000 damage. And the nice thing about it, too, is if your opponent ends up having a response, obviously we have multiple level 9 monsters on the board, so um, if we don't OTK them, then... We can just go into True King in order to secure the game. So, all right, let's go ahead and look at the next game. Okay, so I think this might be the last video we go into, or the last duel we watch for this video. Um, but like I said, we will be watching more virtual world gameplay in tomorrow's video. So definitely stay tuned for that. So, um, yeah, here we open Lili plus Kowloon again. So, yeah, this this video for these games, I just wanted to show off like basic combo lines, I guess. Excuse me, oh my god, <clears throat> that was so gross. Uh, I wanted to show off basic combo lines, um, even though this one actually did get disrupted, so, um, you know, it's not going to be that typical. Uh, you know what, I'm going to start this replay over, hang on. Because I had that gross cough and I lost my train of thought. Alright, so for this next game here, we're going to be playing against a Danger Kaiju variant. 
Uh, this one is playing like Fallen of Albaz and a couple of other tech options I don't think that deck typically plays, but um, looking at my opening hand here, I see Lili, I see Kowloon, I see Callby. I'm feeling pretty good about this hand, right? Activate Kowloon, we're going to set up the Chu Chi, and then of course we're going to activate Lili's, Lili's effect to send a King Long and a Nyan Nyan, or at least we would if our opponent did not have Gamma here, which is actually like just about the only hand trap that's, uh, well besides Zimper maybe, <laughs> that you can't call by, so that's pretty annoying. And it's going to destroy our Lili on top of that, so I'm just going to set my call by here and then pass. But it's got the Gizmech during the end phase, so that's fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, we're definitely not in an advantageous position here, but it's going to then use Thunderbird. Uh, fortunately, they discarded a Kaiju, so we didn't lose one of our back rows here. Now, I actually thought they were going to go for the the number... That to summon the number 100 and then the OTK me here, but uh, I guess they're not using that variant or that engine here because they end up going for the Seven Sins instead. As well as another Gizmech Orochi here. Which is definitely a very scary card. This card is so scary. Oh, that's right. No, no, no. They were going to go for the Dragon, but then I actually get the Nibiru off here. Uh, it's it's kind of semi-rare to Nibiru this deck, um, but it definitely feels good when you can, so... We do need a way to deal with this token. I don't have anything banished, so I can't do it with Chuchi. But I'm the luckiest player in the world, and I just top decked another Lili, so. <laughs> we can just continue our plays from the last turn as though they were uninterrupted. So, like I said, we're going to send a King Long and a Nyan Nyan. We'll use King Long in order to add a Lulu. Now we can activate Lulu's effect, or we would if our opponent didn't concede, as they realize that I have pretty easily have lethal here. Uh, basically, what we would have done from there is we would have just summoned Lulu. Targeting the Chu Chi. Probably just would have sent another King Long from Deck to Graveyard. That or a Kowloon. Probably the King Long, though. And then, let's see. Having the Lulu and the Lili already up. Um, I'd have to look at my Graveyard. Well, then Nyan Nyan would have come back, too. I'm just trying to think of what other virtual monster I would have added. It could have been any one of them, really. It could have been Gigi or Lao Lao. I'd say any one of them, but those are the two I mean there. Either Gigi or Lao Lao. It would not have been hard to find Lethal there. Um, I'd have to actually play it out to really get a better idea, as opposed to just thinking about it, but uh, um, opponent recognized that and then gave us the win. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on now to the outro. Okay, everybody, I just wanna thank you very much for watching to the very end of the video like this. It always means a lot when you guys do that. Um, you have no idea, it really does, it's like the best way you can support the channel is watching the videos all the way up to this point. Uh, another good thing you can do to support the channel is to subscribe. Uh, not only will you support the channel, obviously, in doing so, but uh, that is also the best way to get notified of when my videos go out, which I do go out every single day. So uh, if you subscribe, you do have daily content to look forward to. And comments, please leave them. Um, like I said, I'm always I'm always looking for feedback about gameplay and deck building, but particularly when it's a deck like this that I'm very new to, I'm especially looking for that feedback. I'm really actually counting on you guys for that. Uh, I, not, not to pressure you or anything. No, no, pressure at all. But, uh, um, no, I do really, really like the feedback I get when it comes to gameplay because that really allows me to uh, grow as a player in a way that I don't think a lot of players get to. Um, I, it almost feels like an unfair advantage sometimes having all you guys support me. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, with this deck in particular... Um, Gameplay-wise, I'm especially looking at my uh, combos. That's why for this video, I wanted to show games that show off more basic combos. <coughs> Excuse me. More basic combos where I'm ending on, like, the uh, True King plus Chu Chui or just setting up plays like that. Um, I feel like I've got the basic idea of the deck down, but if there are more optimal ways to combo based on the hands that I open or... Like, even, like, other different lines I can take to make other plays. Um, yeah, I definitely want to know about that. And especially in regards to, like, the extra deck, if I'm missing out on a line because I'm not playing certain extra deck monsters. I mean, obviously, again, there's Ultimized Zulkin and Crystal Wing, which I don't think are necessary to the deck, but might end up getting crafted later down the road. But, yeah, any suggestions or any advice you guys have at all, like I said, I'm always open to it. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I've got for this one, so... Without further ado, this is Sexlex signing out. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.